Welcome back, everyone. We're diving deep into something pretty fascinating today. The Vienna Opera Bowl's 2025 design competition. Yeah, this one's really interesting. It's not just fashion, you know. Right. Alice Waltzer. All waltz. Mm -hmm. It's the theme. Mm -hmm. And it's all about capturing the soul of the waltz in these gowns. And that means the designers, they need to understand the history, how it impacted society, and how to make that wearable art that actually moves on the dance floor. See, that's what gets me excited. I know the waltz is supposed to be all elegant and graceful, but right. I got to admit, I don't know much about its history. Well, get ready for a surprise then. The Viennese waltz, it wasn't always high society. Really? It comes from like peasant dances way back in the Middle Ages. Oh, peasant dances. So we're talking rustic couples twirling around in fields, not exactly those fancy ballrooms we think of today. Exactly. And the journey from there to those ballrooms is pretty wild. So how did it happen? Think late 18th, early 19th centuries. The waltz starts appearing in these aristocratic circles and it caused a scandal. A scandal, huh? Why? The close embrace. For the time, it was seen as super scandalous, even rebellious. So it wasn't just a dance. It was a statement, like challenging the whole social order. I see why they chose Alice Walser for this competition especially with the 200th anniversary of Johann Strauss's birth coming up. Yeah. Strauss, he's like the waltz king. He made the waltz popular all over Europe. Right. And he wasn't just writing music for the elite. Absolutely. But... People from all walks of life loved his waltzes. It really broke down some barriers. And that idea that inclusivity and pushing boundaries, it's still relevant today in both dance and fashion. For sure. So thinking about these designs, do the designers need to, like, put that rebellious spirit into their gowns somehow. It's not a rule, but I think the smart designers, they'll pick up on that. To really embody Alice Walzer, a gown can't just be beautiful. It has to tell a story, make you feel that sense of freedom, maybe even challenge some norms. So the stakes are even higher now. Oh. It's not just a pretty dress. It's about capturing this whole cultural phenomenon. I can feel the pressure these designers must be under. Oh, it's high pressure for sure, uh -huh. especially with how they judge these gowns. Yeah, what are they looking for? Elegance, that visual impact, but it also has to be practical for waltzing. Makes sense. A gown that can't move wouldn't be doing the waltz justice. Hmm. What are some of the challenges, though? How do you get that balance? Well, think about it. Like trying to waltz in a gown that's too heavy or too tight, you know, yeah. or one with a train that gets tangled up every time you spin, it's uh, not going to work. Right. A recipe for disaster. Exactly. So designers have to really think about the fabric, how it's constructed, even where the embellishments go so it flows with the dancer. It's like a balancing act between the art and the practicality of it. It really is. Are there like specific things that work well for a waltzing gown? Oh yeah, definitely. Think about fabrics that drape well and kind of flow, like silk chiffon or ganza, maybe even a lightweight velvet. The cut's super important too. An A-line or a bias cut skirt, that gives you movement, but then a corseted bodice that gives you support. I see, I see. And don't forget, sleeves, long and flowing, off the shoulder, or even no sleeves for a modern look. So many options. Do designers ever look back at, like, historical waltz gowns for inspiration? They do. It's a mix of that and pushing the boundaries, creating something new. But looking back gives you good insight into what works, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like corsets. They were in those old gowns for a reason. Right. I was just thinking about those 19th century gowns. Mm. They were so elegant, but they must have been so hard to move in. How did women even dance in those? Well, those corsets, they were meant to cinch the waist to give you that silhouette, but they did have some give. They right. weren't like totally rigid. And the skirts, even though they were huge, they used lightweight fabrics and were constructed in a way that let you move, surprisingly. So it's not just copying old designs. It's understanding why they were made that way and making it modern. Uh. Does the competition have like rules about historical stuff. No hard rules. It's more about capturing how the waltz has changed over time. Right. So maybe you add a bit of Victorian lace, an art deco silhouette, or even do a futuristic take on a 19th century gown. I love that. Mixing eras. Last year's winners, Alexandra gokulak Nagel, Marlon Sabetzer, and Making Closer, they all had such different styles. They did. And we have a photo here of Making Closer's designs. These were actually worn at the 2024 Opera Ball. Oh, wow. Let me see. Those are gorgeous. The way she uses those clean lines with such detail and the colors, it's amazing. Yeah. And I remember Closer, she did that master class in stage costume design before the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. Right. Art and function all in one. Those gowns look like they'd be amazing to waltz in. 
Speaking of amazing, what does winning this competition do for a designer? Oh, it's huge. Think about it. Your designs are one of the biggest events in the world. All that media attention, the people you meet, and you get to work with the Vienna State Ballet. Oh. It could launch your whole career internationally. That's incredible. No wonder it's such a tough competition. It's not just a dress. It's like fashion history. Mm. And with the Alice Walser theme and Strauss's anniversary, I bet 2025 is going to be even bigger. I think so, too. This theme, it's like they're asking designers to really get to the heart of the waltz, understand it, and then show that in their designs. The winning gown, it'll be more than just a dress. It'll show how the waltz can last through time, go beyond boundaries, you know. It's almost like translating Strauss's music into fabric. That movement, the romance, pushing back against convention, all in one gown. This is going to inspire some incredible designs. I can feel it. Maybe someone listening right now will create the winning one. You know what? That's a great point. And that kind of leads us to our challenge for everyone listening. Oh, I like this. We've talked about the history, all the technical stuff, how important this competition is. But now it's your turn. Okay, I'm listening. Imagine you're one of these designers. You get invited to this huge competition. Alice Walser is the theme. You've got Strauss in your head. What would you do? Ooh, good question. What's your vision for this gown? Right. What's its story? What fabrics would you use? What shape would it be? How would you show how the waltz has changed from those fields to these amazing ballrooms? And don't just think about what's already been done. The waltz, it's got that elegance, but also that energy. It follows tradition, but it also kind of breaks the rules. How would you show that in your design? Something timeless, but also new. Would you use those classic looks, maybe some fancy details, or go totally modern with the shapes and fabrics? Would you get inspiration from Strauss's music? or just the feeling of the dance. And don't forget, it can't just be pretty. It has to move well on the dance floor. How would you make sure it flows but still looks elegant and holds its shape? This is where you get to go all out. Sketch some ideas, make a mood board, research fabrics, really get into the world of the Viennese waltz. Let the history, the music, even that rebellious spirit guide you. And while you're at it, check out the Vienna Opera Ball website. We'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah, great idea. You can see past winners, learn about the rules, maybe even picture your design in that famous ballroom. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll see your gown out there trailing on the dance floor. That would be amazing. Okay, before we wrap up, let's go over what we've learned today. Sounds good. We started with the waltz, how it went from peasant dances to high society, how it kind of shook things up. Right. Challenging the norms. Then we talked about Strauss, the waltz king. How his music made the waltz even more popular. And how he brought it to everyone. Exactly. And of course, we dove into this incredible design competition where fashion needs history on a world stage. It's a pretty unique combination. But the story's not over. The waltz, how it affects culture and fashion, that's still happening. And with Alice Walser for 2025, I can't wait to see what the designers come up with. It's going to be fascinating. I know, me too. I hope you all enjoyed this deep dive. It's been a fun one. It really has. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep creating. Bye.